Hello dear friends, I am Dr. Shravya, Consultant Reproductive Medicine and Fertility Specialist here at 49 Hospital Secunderabad. So today I will be talking about fertility enhancing surgeries. So what are the treatment options and for what causes can we use surgery as a model, modality of treatment. So there are quite a few conditions which require surgery and by which the surgery will solve your issues. Infertility has become quite a common issue affecting almost uh, 10 to 15 percent of the population worldwide. Even in India, the incidence has been rising. So among the people walking into our clinic with infertility, we can attribute 30 to 35 percent of the causes to female factor and around 30 percent causes to the male factor. 20 percent would have combined factors both male and female partners would have some issues and around 10 percent would have unexplained causes. So among these causes there are certain conditions like polycystic ovaries, fibroids, endometriosis and even some tubal factors which can be corrected by the surgeries. So let us discuss and know about what are the options available. So among them usually all the fertility enhancing surgeries are minimally invasive surgeries. Minimally invasive procedures by minimally invasive I mean to say that one they are less time consuming, less painful, require less hospital stay, probably a duration most of them are daycare and the rest might require one day's admission and you will have very little pain and very little blood loss. So among these procedures, there are two major categories that we divide. One are laparoscopic procedures, the others are hysteroscopic procedures. So what is the difference between laparoscopy and hysteroscopic procedures? Laparoscopy is a keyhole surgery wherein we put a small incision which is less than one centimeter at your belly button and put a scope. A scope is a thin tube which is around the size of your pen with a camera attached to it and through a monitor we look at your uterus, your fallopian tubes and your ovaries. So among these we procedures that we do, we can use this procedure for diagnostic purpose and if we find some abnormality we can use laparoscopy to treat the condition as well in the same setting. So among the laparoscopic procedures, com most commonly done procedure is diagnostic hysterolaparoscopy. In diagnostic hysterolaparoscopy, as I have told you, it is just a minimally invasive procedure with a daycare uh, stay in the hospital. Maximum post procedure will keep you for 4 to 5 hours and then discharge you. So in this, we will be observing looking at your uterus, tubes and ovaries on the external contour. So what is the difference between a laparoscopy and a hysteroscopy? In hysteroscopy, we will be looking at your uterus from the inside. So as you can see in this uh, model that is given, laparoscopy will be when we put a port above and look at your uterus, tubes and ovaries on the above external contour. Hysteroscope is we put a tube from below, a scope from below to look at your uterus lining and to see at your gland architecture and if there are some issues with your internal part, part of the uterus. So what are the conditions that can be diagnosed on laparoscopy? The first and foremost is endometriosis. Endometriosis usually if it is severe wherein it is affecting the ovaries and the uterus called the adenomyosis in that we can be detected on scan itself on a good ultrasound. But sometimes people have what is called a mild to minimal endometriosis wherein we have endometriotic spots or additions which block the tubes or which distort your tubo ovarian relationship. In those conditions they can be diagnosed on laparoscopy and at the same setting we can do a little adhesiolysis that is we separate the additions and free the tube from the additions so that your fertility is restored. Apart from endometriosis in polycystic ovarian syndrome also there is something called big bulky ovaries. In those patients who have big bulky ovaries and who are not ovulating despite giving drugs whether is it oral tablets or injectables then they might require what is called a procedure called drilling, ovarian drilling. So we just put 4 to 5 punctures on the surface of the ovary so that the hormonal environment is restored back to its balance and the patient ovulates. 
So, polycystic ovarian syndrome also we do laparoscopic ovarian drilling. And the another surgery that we do commonly is laparoscopic myomectomy. In patients who have fibroids, fibroids are small muscle masses which arise from the uterine musculature. So, this is the uterus, this is the uterine musculature. From here, a small mass arises called fibroid. So, this fibroids might be impairing your fertility. So, in those conditions, in patients who suffer with big fibroids or fibroids which affect their fertility, then they can be removed laparoscopically. Apart from fibroids, PCOS, endometriosis, we also do laparoscopic surgeries for tubal factors. Especially, some patients would have undergone tubal sterilization wherein their tubes are blocked to prevent conception but sadly they might have lost a child and they want to undergo tubal recanalization. So, laparoscopic tubal recanalization is done and then they can go back to trying naturally. Apart from that, they, we call, uh, we do something called hysteroscopic tubal cannulation. So, these what procedures I have told you were laparoscopic. Now, let us move on to hysteroscopic procedures. So, in the hysteroscopic procedures, one there is called diagnostic hysteroscopy. So, we look at the uterine lining and see if there is any gross abnormalities. So, abnormalities like infections in the uterus can be identified on hysteroscopy. So, apart from diagnostic, we also do operative hysteroscopies. So, if patient has something called a septum, uterine septum, something which blocks the cavity, in those cases also we do a procedure called metroplasty. So, we remove the septum, septoplasty or any anomalies in the uterus can also be corrected by metroplasty. So, apart from that, if patients have some tubal blockage at the corno, that is at the starting part of the tube, then we can do a procedure called hysteroscopic tubal cannulation. So, we just put a guide wire and try to clear the block. So, these are the wide various procedures available to enhance fertility in female. So, what are the fertility enhancing surgeries in male? So, in male, the fertility enhancing surgeries depend on the cause. So, as all, all of you know about different causes, we have something called varicoceles. Varicoceles are a big bag of veins which cover your testis. So, these veins are decreasing your sperm count. So, in to correct the abnormalities, we use a surgery called varicocelectomy wherein we block the vessels and correct the surgery so that your sperm count can improve. So, apart from that, we also have certain surgical procedures in patients who have no count in their ejaculate that is a condition called azoospermia. If there are no sperms available in the ejaculate, then we do a procedure called surgical sperm retrieval. So, we retrieve the sperms either from the testis or from the epididymis. So, these are the wide available options for fertility enhancing surgeries. So, if you uh, want to know further details, you can approach us or you can drop a comment in the comment box. Thank you.